This portion of the news brought to you by McDonald's. McDonald's, I'm loving it. By the end of the year, the government says it is on target to have created 20,000 jobs since coming into office in 2012. This as it continues to implement reforms of the country's finances. Prime Minister the Right Honourable Perry Christie making the bold statement as he spent his wrap-up presentation of the mid-year budget debate defending accusations by the opposition that his findings and summations of the state of the economy were illusional. Clint Watson reports. I am convinced that we have set the stage for solid recovery and expansion of our economy yes, and job security for our citizens. And Prime Minister the Right Honorable Perry Christie says there's nothing delusional about the country's economic outlook that he recounted during the past week of the mid-year budget debate. Mr. Christie says the opposition is having a difficult time dealing with the facts because the government is speaking to a recovering economy that's back on track and growing. The Prime Minister moved from island to island, investment after investment, detailing the dollar value and increased jobs already committed by various projects that have already been approved. It is acknowledged we've created 8,000 plus jobs. I'm just indicating to you now, Mr. Speaker, a basic minimum of another 8,000 jobs. So that, that's going to make 16,000, Mr. Speaker. But when you, when you look, Mr. Speaker, at the impact of what I'm talking about, you're going to see where there's 20,000 jobs by the end of this year that we would have done. That's what's happening, Mr. Speaker. And, I'm, I, and throughout this speech, Mr. Speaker, I'm, gonna, I'm speaking definitively about targets that we are expecting to meet. The Prime Minister says they expect recurrent expenditure to continue to decline as they put in place cost-cutting measures. It is vitally important that Bahamians understand that redressing the public finances in a sustainable manner is a critical means to an end that we all desire. That the International Monetary Fund, in its latest world economic outlook, is projecting with the measures in our fiscal reform plan, a rebound in the growth of our economy in 2015 with a real growth rate of 2.1% up from 1.4% last year and 0.7% in 2013. Speaking to the growth of unemployment, he noted that the amount of discouraged workers declined as many are now encouraged and seeking work, resulting in the increase in unemployment figures. We are turning the corner and that employment prospects will brighten significantly in the quarters and years to come. Clint Watson, ZNS Network News. Still on the mid-year budget, the National Security Minister also contributed to the debate and he talked about crime and the judicial system. Keisha Adderley reports. National Security Minister Dr. Bernard Nottage says electronic monitoring may not be enough. Now the courts are being asked to consider further restrictions to counter a system Dr. Nottage says provides easier access to bail and by extension heightens repeat offenses. We have sought to have restrictions put on these people who wear ankle bracelets. In other words, not only must we be able to know where they are at all times, but they are, we are asking judges to consider restricting their movements, particularly in, in the evenings and if they're not, if they're not working. Dr. Nottage concedes that the backlog of cases weighs on the decision to grant bail, but says upgrades to the system should improve efficiency and weaken arguments for the granting of bail. The government has invested in a number of new courts, a number of new judges, and it is expected that sometime next month uh, these courts will come into effect. It's also invested in, in uh, public defenders to ensure that persons uh, have the opportunity to be appropriately defended before the courts so that we can see whether or not we can have these trials conducted a lot more quickly than is the case now. Addressing gang warfare, blaming it for a major role in crime, Dr. Nottage referenced a new law which imposes a half million dollar fine for participation in gangs, and he spoke to the government's attack on this problem. Whether it's one order, whether it's fire and theft, whether it's mad ass, whether it's money over bees, dirty south, Mr. Speaker, 
and, and others whose names I can't remember right now. Um, but it is my intention that we establish a gang unit on the Royal Bahamas Police Force to deal specifically with this major problem that we have. Additionally, Mr. Speaker, um, we have to target gang members, gang leaders, Mr. Speaker, and deal with them before they deal adversely, adversely with us. The frequency of crime in the country makes government attention on the problem a constant, but the government is hoping that in the months ahead, the reforms that it's putting in place will change that. Keisha Adderley, ZNS Network News. 100 female students from schools throughout the capital got some crucial information on the impact of sexting during a two-day seminar at St. Agnes Parish called Overexposed and Underprepared. And as LaDawn Davis tells us tonight, the two-day seminar which seeks to educate young Bahamians about the impact of sexting, it went over well. A photo shared between two people can quickly become a viral phenomenon known as sexting, which over the past few years has dominated social media websites. With a large number of sexually explicit online photos and videos involving Bahamians recently on rotation, members of the Bain and Grantstown Urban Renewal targeted young preteen girls to enlighten them about the consequences that comes with this issue. A few of the primary school participants told us they were surprised about what they learned at the one-day seminar. You are on these different sites and you don't know what's going on. People might be hacking your accounts and you don't know what they're doing. So you have to be careful on what you're doing online, like on Facebook, Skype. There are many people that can be linked to the stuff that you put on the internet and they can view it and it can be sent to the wider world and it can cause trouble. Very um, dangerous because there are dangerous predators out there. They can link to other people and find you. It can even lead to more dangerous things like people can hurt you and, and cause depression, maybe even suicide sometimes. Data Protection Commissioner Sharmi Austin was amazed that more than half of the young attendees were owners of smartphones. She encouraged the group to become more responsible users. They were not given to you to record your friends doing can I say, as I used to say in primary school, bad things? Officer in charge of the Central Detective Unit's Business Technology and Crime Unit, Superintendent Mark Barrett, revealed that he has seen an increase in the number of young people sexting across the country. He is also encouraging them to think before they act. We have individuals, particularly teenagers between the ages of 12 and 17 years, who are now taking photos, posting these images of themselves, uh, these images are then uh, distributed throughout the world and then when they realize that these images have gone war viral, then they come and they uh, report these matter to us. And we just want them to, to just be aware of their, of, of their actions because these actions have consequences. Now on Friday, students from the junior and senior high schools will receive their pep talk on the dangers of sexting. LaDawn Davis, ZNS Network News. This portion of the news was brought to you by McDonald's. McDonald's, I'm loving it.